Okay, so I wasn't planning on vlogging today at all, but I have such a busy day with so many students, so I figured today's the perfect day. Um, if you didn't get the joke, I literally have zero students today. Um, not good, kind of strange, but also like hilarious, and I found it really funny. That's why I had to vlog. Um, basically, today, which is Monday, the... Oh my gosh, I'm losing track of days. Monday the 14th and Tuesday the 15th are two days of orientation. So today it was supposed to be students from A to K last names come to school and then Tuesday the rest of the alphabet last names would come. Um, so the thing is, I only was supposed to have three to begin with because it just worked out that way where all my last names are kind of more at the end of the alphabet. So I was only supposed to have three, but I really did think the three would come. Um, so that's funny. They're not here. My class is literally empty. I, I had a whole plan of what I was going to do. So, you know, that obviously makes me sad because I wonder why. I hope I didn't scare them or I hope I didn't bore them. I mean, it is orientation, so it's not the most fun days. And they did come last week for orientation. So they probably are like realizing it's not really like full day of learning. So maybe they just told their parents they're gonna come next uh, on Wednesday, which is like the official first day of school. I don't know. Anyways, I talked to my admin. I let them know like, hey, your girl's alone today if you need me to help around the school. So they're going to let me know. Um, my VP was super kind and said, I can pretty much take the morning to just work in my classroom until they figure out what they need me to do or where they need me to go, which is amazing. So I've just been you know, using the day to get organized because I can, I can use it for sure after being given two new grades in less than a week's notice. So I definitely can use the organizational day, which is awesome. So that's what I'm going to do today. Um, I just organized my door and I just put like all the emojis that we worked on on orientation day last week. So I will show you how the door looks. It's really cute. There's just a little poster that says like, this classroom contains excited learners. And then there's a bunch of like crazy emoji faces. My students really liked doing that. Um, I will link below the TPT store where I got that from. It's really awesome. Um, then I'm now going to put in the crayon boxes into every student desk because I didn't do that yet because I wasn't sure what the student numbers would be like. But now I'm looking at my numbers and it looks like I have about 12, which is crazy because it keeps changing. Literally last week I checked my schedule and it said 19 and I freaked out because I was preparing for 15. So I had to go buy like four more of everything and I just, I was making more do it folders. I keep saying duotangs, but someone corrected me in the comments and I remember now in America, you guys say folders and duotangs is a weird Canadianism. So I'm gonna say folders. So I uh, had to make more folders and just all bunch of things. I had to make more mailboxes and book bins. So I freaked out and did all that. And then I came back this week and now it's at 12. So from 19 to 12. So I don't know if I did all that for nothing, but at least now I'm prepared in case any students do come later in the year and switch from online to in-person. So yeah, um, I'm going to now do that. And then I think I'm going to start kind of doing some planning, like curriculum wise, I'm gonna plan out what I wanna do for the next upcoming weeks because I do have grade threes starting next this week too. So I'm gonna do grade twos in the morning and then grade threes in the afternoon. I haven't met with the threes yet because we're only starting that on Wednesday. So I do wanna prep some stuff for the grade threes as well. So I will check in with you guys a little bit later. Okay, so here's a little look inside their desk. So the number is on their chairs. That way um, students do not mix up their chairs. So everyone has to have their own chair for the year. I showed you this in my setup, but everyone has a little pencil pouch with like a glue stick, scissors, two pencils, a highlighter, a whiteboard marker, all that. I did go ahead and put one crayon box and these are from the Dollar Tree. So I put a crayon box with their number. If they want markers or something like that, they can bring that in themselves because right now we don't have enough to give to everyone. So they have crayons. Uh, most students do bring their own markers and pencil crayons anyways, so that's fine. Um, then we have this. This is just going to be their little like coloring book. So whenever they're finished early, they can just grab that from their disc. And then we have our duotang or our folder. Oh my gosh, am I ever gonna stop? Um, the folder for their word of the day in French. So that's all in their desk right now. So here's an update on their book bins. 
Obviously I prepared up to 20 or 19, but I probably won't need all those. So eventually throughout the year, I'll take them away if we have a more stable information on our numbers. But for now I'm gonna leave it because I don't wanna be scrambling in case we do get more students. So um, they have all their folders and a notebook for French. And this is going to be separate. This is their mailboxes. So that's their book bins. So it's with folders, journals, and we're gonna eventually have some books where they get to read from, and then we'll rotate them after quarantining the books. So that's just for like work. And this is going to be mailboxes for things to take home. So anytime I have letters or homework or papers, I'll just put them in there. And then at the end of the day, they can grab the papers from their mailbox, put it in their zippy bags, and go home just like that. So this is gonna be useful. Again, I probably won't need all these, and right now I'm at 12, so if I could stay at 12, that would be awesome, because they would fit all on the first shelf, which would free up so much space for me to do other stuff down there. So we're gonna wait on the numbers and move things around as we see fit. I do think I showed this in my other vlog, but that's my bathroom system. So students have their number, and they will move the magnet onto if they're a girl fee or a garçon for boy. So they'll just touch their own magnet and move it like that. All right, and this is my sanitation station. We have to use the board provided um, sanitizer and cleaner. So this is more for like when we're cleaning toys and manipulatives and things like that. This is for obviously hands. And then I have a box of tissues back there. So it's on this little table. And I did keep this as an extra desk with a number in case eventually I will need another desk. That way it's already in my class and I don't have to lug another desk all over the school. Okay, so I went ahead and prepared my like little newsletters that I'm going to be putting in um, their mailboxes for when the first official day starts. Um, I just put a sticky note because my, I don't know if, I don't want to put my teaching partner's name online just in case. So it just, this is a template I got off of TPT. It has a September newsletter. It's completely editable. So I'll try to remember to put that below. Um, so I just talked about reminders. So, you know, um, so students should come to school wearing a mask. Um, they should bring a reusable water bottle. And these are just like asking if any parents can bring some supplies. That would be amazing. And it's mostly just cleaning stuff. Um, I just realized her name was on there. Hopefully that's fine. Uh, we can't do really birthday treats this year, which is kind of sad. So I made sure to note of that because parents do know me from previous years and they remember we used to have parties and stuff. So I want to make sure I put that there. And then also just about their zippy bags and making sure that they check it every night and empty it out. So that's there. Then on the second page, it is just um, their Seesaw login with their code. And then I also printed off one of these. So this is just letting families know that we are going to be having class headphones and I need every student to bring their own, obviously for sanitary reasons. And that's where it's going to go over there in our headphone storage. So yeah, I just worked on that and we will see what else I get up to. Good morning and happy Tuesday. Um, I am so groggy right now. I could not sleep all night. I definitely think it's because of the full moon. <laughs> there was a full moon last night. If you believe in that stuff, I definitely do because I was wide awake, even though my body was tired. Um, anyways, so I left off yesterday not finishing the day pretty much, but um, yeah, I, I had no kids the entire day and my admin never called me the entire day. So I literally had the whole day in my classroom. I had so much to do. I don't know where the day went, honestly, like I was working on folders and different things. And by the end of the day, like by the end, the, before I knew it, um, it was the end of the day. So that was wild. Um, definitely doesn't happen often as a teacher having a full day to yourself without kids. So I definitely, you know, took that to my advantage. Um, today will be a regular day. We have now students coming to school with uh, last names from K to Z. So the rest of the alphabet, I do expect to have about, um, I would say eight, nine kids. So we'll see how many come. Um, so it's just our last day of orientation and then our first official day starts tomorrow. So I am excited to just kind of finish off with all these procedures and protocols just so we can start our official first day. So I'm going to take you into the school and show you what I have planned for today. All right, little teacher hack. I've been loving making like overnight oats in 
the fridge and that way I just grab and go. These mason jars are from Amazon. I can link them below. They're amazing. Um, and it's just such a nice breakfast because honestly, I'm not such a morning person. So it's nice to have like, I sorry, I meant I'm not, oh my gosh, I'm tired. I'm not such a morning eater. So I like a little something like this. And I also prefer sweet in the morning. That's just me. Um, I also got this off Amazon, which is like pretty ridiculous and I didn't need it, but also like, why don't I have, why didn't I have this sooner? So I put my lunch in this like little glittery tote because I'm extra, but I never really had like a place to put my spoon, fork, knife, whatever I'm bringing. And I would always wipe it down with Kleenexes or something and then just put it in my bag. But now I have a little holder to keep everything in. Um, okay, awkward, my principal just came in. I don't know if she heard me vlogging, but I just like dropped my phone down because I felt like super uncomfortable and I don't really want like my staff to know about me doing YouTube. Not that there's anything wrong with it and I'm not showing any kids on my channel or anything like that or and I'm not giving information about the school, but just it's like my private little hub so I don't really want to, you know, advertise that I'm doing this. So anyway, sorry, I just like dropped the camera and freaked out. Um, like I was mentioning, these pouches are amazing because you just have everything you need. So like a knife, fork, spoon where's my spoon oh here it is and so then i have it all i need i can wipe it down put it in my bag without dirtying other things and then wash it at home and bring it back and i used to sometimes forget bringing the right cutlery because i didn't have this so i feel like now that i have everything i need in here it's pretty bomb it actually came with chopsticks and a reusable straw too I'm, I took those out because I don't really use that on my day-to-day -day basis, but that's really cool. So I can link this below to Amazon. So I'm just gonna enjoy my oatmeal and, or my quick oats, overnight oats, and I will see you eventually today. Okay, so it's one of my students' birthdays today, and I actually got this idea from Kim uh, from Elementary in the Midden. She had such a good idea about putting a tablecloth on her student's desk to celebrate their birthday. I think that's so, so cute. And normally I do like more things like I give um like one of those like giant punching um, like beanbag balloons. Yeah, so I normally do like a giant balloon and students love that, but I'm not gonna be blowing up balloons this year and spreading germs like that. So I thought the desk idea is so adorable because it really stands out and lets them feel special for the day. I do also give like a little Jolly Rancher lollipop um, to eat at home, she will not be eating it in class and then I want to show you my new um like behavior management system I'm starting like brag tags but I hate the name bragging and I hate brag tags so I'm calling it um compliment bracelets so let me show you what I'm going to be okay so this is my little compliment bracelet um kit that I prepared this summer it's really awesome you can find on tpt if you just search like brag tags or brag bracelets you'll find a bunch of these so I printed the ones that I really like off and basically what they are is just like little strips. I, I organized them all with like little um, binder clips and I just put them in here and they're all different. So I have one that's like, I'm a super leader or helper, sorry. Um, this is what I thought I was teaching first grade. I won't be using that one this year. Um, I have an awesome attitude. I have some for themed like holidays, like on Earth Day, I'm going to be giving one to everyone. This is the one for birthday. So I'm going to be giving my student this one today. And basically what it is, is you can just tape it or staple. I probably will tape just so that there's nothing like sharp on their wrist. You can just tape it around their wrist and they get to wear it all day and they feel really, really special. And primary students love these kind of little simple positive reinforcements. You don't need to spend money giving prizes. It's a really nice way to do, you know, something special. I also will be giving one when students become student of the week. And there's just so many, like I'll show you a couple. I'm a good team player. I make good choices, I'm a fantastic leader, I'm caring. Um, this is for when you lose a tooth, I thought that was fun. I follow our classroom expectations, I've got a Halloween one. So I'm gonna be giving them out like sporadically throughout the year. I'm going to mention to students like you don't get one every single time, right? If you do one thing that's caring, you're not going to come to me and say, Madame, do I get a compliment bracelet? I'm telling them that they only get one when I notice that they're doing it without um, expecting anything. So they're just doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. They're just being good people. So we're gonna talk about that today, but I'm really excited to introduce it by giving uh, my student her first birthday compliment bracelet. So this is exciting. This container you can just get from the dollar store. I think it stores them perfectly. I think it's like a scrapbooking um, container, so you can look for that. But yeah, 
I really love this system. It's the first time I'm using it, so I will obviously update you guys like later on in the year how it's working out. But if you like the idea, definitely uh, try it out. All right, a lot of time has gone by. We've done a lot. It is now period six and they're on prep. I mean, it's my prep, so they're outside playing with a planning time teacher. Um, and I thought I'd just check in and show you what we've been up to. So we read this story. Love this book. I'm gonna actually turn the camera over so you guys can see better. So we read the story Germs vs. Soap by Dee Dee Dragon. It's absolutely hilarious. Students really love it. Um, it's just like really funny. There's like funny graphics and um, the germs have like a lot of character. So students find it hilarious. So we read the story and then we brainstormed on chart paper all the things that germs love. So these are some things they came up with. I found it really funny. Um, the, this whole like product is a um, something on TPT. I think it's from uh, Teach Love and Iced Coffee. I'm going to link it down below. It's really good. So we did that. Then we also brainstormed um, these six steps to washing your hands properly. So we, I just glued, I glued those on or taped them on. Um, students first told me the step and then when they got it correct, I put it up. So we talked about the six steps. And then we um, worked on our booklets, how to wash your hands. So all students got one and they had to copy down the steps and fill it out and then they got to color it in. So that was a really fun um, English period. I know that I am like the French half of the day, but... Yeah, so normally I'm gonna be doing only the French, but for this week, we're not doing the flip model where my students go with the English teacher because it's orientation week. So we're just starting off with our own class for the whole day. So I'm doing English and French for this week. Um, also, we got an email from admin letting us know that there's going to be a lot of changes happening because basically all the staff who are online are now going to be um, some of them coming back to the school. So there's been a lot of changes because of a, lot, a lot of enrollment has gone online. So it's a lot to take in and because of this, we don't know what we're going to be teaching. And to be honest, my position could be changing again. So I'm trying not to overthink about it and freak out. We're going to find out tomorrow, so you're gonna see in this vlog what happens, but I possibly could be changing and not doing grade two and three anymore. So yeah, it's really hectic, I'm stressed, but we're making the most of it. My kids are lovely, so I had an amazing day. Um, last period is coming up and I'm just gonna put on an episode, teacher life, by the end of the day, honestly, it's orientation week, like, we're not gonna stress. They're easing into school. They've been away from school for so long. Let me know if you can relate with me down below in the comments. Do you sometimes just put on an episode and call it a day? My students love it, so I know they'll be happy about the episode. We normally watch something like Boss Baby or um, we've watched like Franklin before, just funny things like that. So I'm gonna think about it. Uh, we've watched Magic School Bus, just a lot of things. If you guys have any um, recommendations for like fun primary leveled shows, either on Netflix or YouTube or any of that, let me know. So yeah, that's gonna be our end of the day, just honestly an episode and then packing up and going home. And I will check in with you on day three, which is Wednesday tomorrow. Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday. It is actually the first official day of school. I feel like we've had literally like three different first days of school because of orientation and how students came with last names like A to K and then K to Z, whatever. So today's the first day where everyone can come today. So I'm really excited about that. Right now, my number is at, sorry, I'm just trying to open my tea. Um, right now, the numbers are at 12 for my grade twos. And then when I switch in the afternoons, we have 10 grade three. So it's not too bad, but like I mentioned yesterday, they're doing reorg. So they're reorganizing the entire staffing like list and position. So we're finding out today by the end of the day what our new position is. Um, so that can definitely change because I heard that they're trying to, which is so messed up, not the school's fault though. It's the board and just our, Honestly, like our, our mayor, just the, the fact that they're doing for education that all classes should be maxed. So 20 kids from grades one to three in a classroom and 23 if they're online. So there's not really gonna be distancing possible. Um, I have desks right now for 15, just like I set it up and it's taken up the entire class. So 
adding five more, forget about, you know, being far apart from each other. It's going to be just, just for show, to be honest. But that's what it is. That's the world of education these days. Anyways, trying to stay positive. I'm loving my groups. Of kids they're so much fun and today we have a lot of fun things to do so I'm excited um, I f I'm filming an outfits of the week teacher outfits of the week video so all the information of everything I've been wearing this week will be in that video so look out for that if it's not already out um, yeah so I just you saw me go I filled up gas this morning and then I drove to Tim Hortons those who don't know Tim Hortons is like a Canadian Dunkin Donuts if you will I don't know it's pretty huge I think there's a couple in the States but I could be wrong um, so I love Tim Hortons. I just got a green tea. I'm trying to wean off coffee. I was never a coffee person, but somewhere along the way this summer and through quarantine and just all the weird routines, I kind of developed a coffee habit. So I'm trying to just kind of cut back on that, but I am a little tired. So green tea has some caffeine and it helps a little bit. I also got a smile cookie. They're so cute. Okay, so smile cookies, it's like a thing Tim Hortons does around this time of year. Um, they're a dollar and 100% of the proceeds go to local charities like hospitals, uh, child programs, um, just stuff like that. And so I think that's really cool that they do that. And to be honest, like I love, I already mentioned, I love having sweets in the morning. That's just something I like. So I was like, I always try to pick up a couple of these while they do the program just to give back. So got a smile cookie, got my tea. Um... I love pulling out my calendar and opening a new page. So this was yesterday's page. It was so positive and I loved it. Let's see what we have for Wednesday, September 16th. Ooh, it's a long one. All right, Calm Bomb. I'm gonna put it here so you can pause the screen and read it, but I'm gonna take a look. Remember a time when you felt love towards another person? How did you express that love? In Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, he identifies the ways in which humans show their affection, words of affirmation, quality time, gifts, physical touch, and acts of service. What language do you show love for another and how do you prefer to receive love from another? Challenge yourself to try another form of expression and see how that feels. I love that. Um, I've actually read, I don't think, I don't know if it was that book, but I read a love language book and I thought it was really interesting because we totally do have different ways that we express love. And actually that's something you can take into account with the teaching, right? You can see how students, and I'm sure you've already noticed, students will show you love in different ways. You'll have some sweet girls and boys too. I don't know why I said girls, but I just, I normally get these from girls, but you'll get like cute little books saying like, Madame Jo Hall, I love you. Um, stay safe. So you'll get people who make you art. Then you'll have others who are huggers. You'll get um, other students who love to tell you stories about their home life. You'll just have all kinds of different ways that students express themselves and they're all forms of love. So all those forms are ways students are showing you they care about you and they're trying to connect with you. So that's a good thing to notice and maybe try to reflect on how do you show love? Are you the kind of person who maybe jokes around with your class or do you kind of give them tough love? Like Whatever it is your way, try to find different ways to show love on different days, maybe just so you're reaching all the different types of love languages, honestly. I think that's really cool. I try to do that with my partner as well. So it's just something, a nice positive reminder for the day. So um, I will check in with you guys later. I'm gonna get organized for the day and yeah, we'll see you when I have maybe planning time or at lunch. I'm really excited. I just bought one of these from the dollar store finally. I've always wanted like a cute letter board. Um, and this, since it's our first official day of second grade, I made this little sign um, and I'm gonna have students like sanitize their hands before they hold it and after, and we'll take pictures so that I can post these on Seesaw for families to have a cute memory of their students. So I'm excited to do this later today. All right, so as we predicted, um, big news. I know I told you guys that we are going to be getting new positions and that was absolutely correct. And I got switched again. So for those who haven't been watching my whole journey from my first classroom setup video, basically I started off as a first grade French immersion teacher. That means I teach my first grade class all day, but half my day was taught in French and the other half was taught in English. Then I got switched to doing a two and three. So my mornings would be with the grade twos, teaching them like French subjects. And then my afternoons would be switched with grade threes and the English teacher would switch in between. So that was doing grade twos and threes. 
Now, just found out, I'm going to be doing back to grade one, which yay, I love first grade, but I'm doing grade one in the morning, just the French periods. Then in the afternoons, I'm doing a two, three split class. So you heard that right. I'm teaching grade one, two, and three this year. Three different curriculums, lots of planning to do. Whoa, my brain is about to explode. This is my prep period, so I'm just honestly taking a moment to gather myself, come to terms with this new assignment. And yeah, so it's going to be a lot this year. There's some pros. I know the grade twos and threes, so they're really good kids. I'm not worried about behaviors. I just know it's gonna be a lot of planning. It's going to be three different grades of curriculum. So for example, the grade threes in social studies, they're learning about early settlers and first nations and pioneers. And the grade twos are learning about family celebrations and traditions. Like the curriculum is just so different. So the split class is going to be a challenge. And normally when you have a split class, you're with the split class all day. I'm now only with them for half a day. So it's like, I need to find a way to be able to teach them the things I need to get done in half a day while also catering to both grades. And then I have the ones in the morning. So it's just like, whoa, whoa, it's a lot. I'm not trying to complain or be negative because I knew there was going to be a change happening and I knew it was going to get hectic. So I kind of expected this. Um, I mean, I didn't get put online, so I guess that's a, you know, like that's a positive thing because a lot of teachers would want to be in my position of teaching in person because some teachers at my school are doing the online program. So, you know, I have to count my blessings. It's a lot to take in, but yay. Now I'm a grade one, two, and three French teacher. And I'm not just teaching French. I'm teaching French, science, social studies, art, and drama. So it is a lot. It's a lot of planning to do. But that starts on Monday. So today's Wednesday. So I have the rest of the week with this class. And then I guess I'll start the switch on Monday. So yeah, this weekend is not gonna really be me having a life. I'm just gonna be doing a lot of work. But yeah, um, so I just want to update you guys so you know my new position. I'll probably like continue talking about this throughout my other vlogs. Um, but yeah, now you know, and now I know. So yay to the unprecedented times. All right, so I have a little hack I wanted to show you guys. This is my, um, look at this. It's a magnetic curtain rod, okay? So this here just sticks on and off the chalkboard like a magnet. And so what I do is I actually put binder rings on it and I put chart papers. So I can move this chart paper around and the cool thing is I can switch this out. So I have my easel here, my chart paper, but sometimes I want like a poster up on the board for students to refer to. So right now we're working on like presenting myself in French and um, talking about like our favorite things. So I wanted to give my example up here and I love how you can just put this up here like a little hack and you can save all your really important chart papers. So I'm gonna be using this for like all my really important anchor charts that I want them to see more clearly because sometimes um, with this, you have to be like flipping the pages that, so that can kind of be a little bit annoying. So yeah, a little hack for you guys. You can find these magnetic rods on Amazon. And the cool thing is it ex extends. So I might even be able to, if I wanted to fit two chart papers, I don't know if I will do that, but that's pretty cool. So little hack for the day. I love using that. It's my new thing that I'm going to be doing. So it's really easy to change out too. So love that. Hello friends. Oh, I feel like I'm always vlogging from this chair. But to be honest, my classroom is not designed for me to be vlogging. Like it's really hard. I have these windows. I don't know, you can't see, but there's three of them. And that is the direct, like I'm on the first floor. So that is literally the area where parents walk to send their kids to school. So if I had the blinds open, parents see me all the time. I have them open throughout the day, but just in the mornings when I'm like trying to wake up and do my thing, I definitely don't want parents like coming into or and peering into the window. So I keep that closed. And then we have the front door, which is literally right across from me, right across from my desk. And so anyone can kind of see into me, but I kind of like that because then I can keep an eye on like who's watching me type of thing. I'm weird. I'm clearly like the weirdest introvert, but I just don't, I don't like being watched. So, um, and then if I go anywhere else, I would have to be holding the camera and I'm so, so tired. So I'm just gonna have you on my tripod and hopefully that's fine that you're in the same angle all the time. Um, 
yeah, I just got here. It's, I can't even talk. It's 8.30. Have my uh, overnight oats that I made, which is a lifesaver for the mornings. Um, what time do you guys start school? Because I know 8.30 is kind of a little bit late, but we have a later start school. So the actual school day starts at 9.15, which I know is really late. I know a lot of schools are like even at 7.45. So lucky in that sense because I live in downtown Toronto and my school is literally a 45 minute drive for me. So it's far. So, you know, I'm grateful that it's a late start so I can still come here and be early and have like my time to kind of wake up without having to rush into starting my day. Um, and then it ends at 3.35, so it's okay. Yeah, I was just honestly, like yesterday, I just took the day to relax. I watched Netflix, we're watching House of Cards right now. It's pretty good. Um, I had, a, yeah, I had a glass of wine, just really relaxed. I tried not to do anything work-related because I'm just so like overwhelmed with the fact that now my teaching position has changed again, I, as I mentioned yesterday. The only thing I did that was a little bit teaching related is I put up my first TPT product, so I'm excited about that. Um, I'm actually going to be putting up like a whole bundle, so I only put up like one of them and I have to put up the rest of them, but it was really interesting. I was learning a lot. It's pretty cool. Um, I will show you guys what I made, so I'm excited about it. Let's go for a little walk. So I'm going to take you to my sink area over here. Okay, so these are the products I made. Love them. So basically what they are is for my fellow French teachers. I made these little clip art images of different themes. So we have animals, we have classroom objects, alphabet, and clothing. And so what it is is you print off the actual picture of whatever vocabulary you're trying to teach your students. And then on the other side, you can glue the actual word in French. So for monkey, un singe. And I've glued them onto these large craft popsicle sticks. And these are so amazing. I'm gonna talk to you from here so you guys can see. These are literally so amazing because there's so many ways to use these. So if it wasn't COVID and we couldn't really like share things, if it wasn't like that, I would let students come take these and quiz each other. They love doing that. So like a student would hold it up and then they would be able to see it, but the student wouldn't see the answer. So the student has to tell you, how do you say this in French? And then the student could just flip it over and show them. So that's one way to use it. Another way is for writing centers. You can have the buckets like on different desks and students can use these to learn the vocabulary words and write a story about maybe like animals or write a story about clothing objects, whatever it is. Another way, is if you're doing distance learning, these would be amazing because especially in first grade, you're teaching them all the vocabulary. So it would be really cool to just, you know, pop open the uh, image on your webcam and have students try and guess what it is and then you can flip it over and show them if they're correct. So there's so many ways to use this. I love that I made these and yes, it is a little bit of prep because you have to laminate um, the circles and then you're gonna hot glue them onto the sticks. But you know what, this is something I'm gonna keep for years. I can literally see myself using this for so many different grades. Even though it is a bit more catered to primary, I can see myself using this for other games. I feel like it's also a really good brain break. Like if you just randomly wanna pull a couple out and have students guess like what, what are they? So you can store them in these like metal tins, that's what I'm doing, or you can just store them in cups or anything you want. I glued on the like labels just so like I know which tin is what, but you don't have to do that. So I have animals here. This is classroom objects. So, you know, I did all of them. So it took a lot of time, but I'm really happy I have these done. And this was honestly before I even knew that I was doing first grade again. So I'm happy I have these because these are gonna be so useful in first grade when they're learning all the words and we're reviewing all the vocab. I really like the alphabet ones because French have obviously a different way of pronouncing the alphabet. So you could use this to show them the letter, but they have to say it in the French way. So you're not saying D, you're saying, you're saying D, because D is the alphabet letter in French. So I put the phonetic, um, like the phonetic spelling of the letters so that students can practice saying them correctly. And I think that's really helpful for French language learning. So this one makes me laugh because it's so funny. For W in French, it's W. <laughs> so I spelt it like that just for students to really remember how to pronounce it. And students always find that word funny, like du blave. <laughs> but yeah, so this is what I worked on and I'm going to make this a bundle and it's gonna be a growing bundle. So I'm going to have other things that I'm adding, 
possibly I'm going to be adding maybe emotions. I might be adding um, family members. So I'm just thinking about what I'm gonna add, but for now I have clothing, alphabet, animals, and classroom objects in French. So, so yeah, I'm definitely going to be linking that in the description box below if you guys wanna check out my first resource. Um, I think it's gonna be really helpful for French teachers. So if you do check it out, please give me feedback. I would love to know what you think about it. So yeah. <gasps> Guys, look how cute. This couldn't get any more Canadian, but every single morning when I look outside my window, there is a flock of Canadian geese right outside my window. So for those who don't know, the Canadian goose is on our loonie, so on our $1 coins. Look at this. They're so cute. They're like moving together. Wait, I'm gonna show you from here. Like, wow. Good morning guys, how is it going? Um, it's Friday, so that's awesome. Um, I feel a lot more high spirits today, yesterday. I know I kind of stopped the vlog like randomly. I didn't really update you guys throughout the day as much as I would have liked to. Um, last night I went to visit my family, like my parents' house. I hung out with them for a bit. I hung out with my older sister. They just got a new dog, so it was really fun just to hang out with the dog, the puppy and just have like a relaxing night honestly like i mentioned i've been watching house of cards so i watched an episode when i came home with my boyfriend and just relaxed because we all need we all need it right now um so this morning i got some news that i am given three prep periods today i was supposed to always have two today because it's my double planning time day but they gave me an extra one today so i have three which is amazing um and i think they they're doing it low-key because they feel bad for me because yeah um i'm gonna be in a crazy position this year teaching three grades but anyways they gave me it and um i'm using one of the planning times to call parents so yesterday i couldn't check in because i was so busy but i was calling some families yesterday during one of my planning times to let families know about the update and about um the fact that i might be their new teacher or maybe to call the families that I was not gonna be teaching anymore. So I had to call them, update them about their new homeroom class and where we're gonna be and all that stuff. Um, a lot of families were really concerned because we are our grade two, three split class is now a size of 22 students, which, you know, if it's 22 students, which is more than even a normal year when it's capped at 20, we know that there's not gonna be much social distancing happening. Like we'll try our best and we'll try to keep everyone safe, but we're not really, you know, even one meter apart at this point. So families are pretty disappointed about the news, but um, they know me because I've taught their kids before. So they trust me and they're happy I'm teaching their kids for half of their day. So it's kind of like, we're all just rolling with it, honestly. Um, so the two threes have 22 students and my grade ones. So. I don't even know if I said this, honestly. I'm like literally losing track of what I've updated you guys on because things are changing literally every day. But um, so my mornings are going to be, I think I said that, my mornings are with grade ones. And so the grade one French immersion program, luckily I only have seven to eight students, which is amazing. Like I've never had such a small class. Um, so the mornings are gonna be chill, really smooth i've taught grade one for two years so i know everything i need to do for the grade one program i'm not worried about my mornings so i'll be with um eight or i think i'm gonna say eight i i heard it's seven or eight so eight students in the morning then i move so the students don't move i move next door for the other half of the day with the two three split class and that's the class with 22 students so it's kind of like a lot of just back and forth okay how which folders do i need do i need to prep these like i'm just kind of figuring everything out as i go never taught grade two or three and now I'm doing it together in a split so it's gonna be a lot of learning this year for sure as I'm sure most of you have been thrown if you are a teacher right now I think a lot of teachers have been thrown into new positions so I'm definitely not alone in this I actually I've, I wrote in a Facebook like group if you guys haven't joined like Facebook teaching groups they're awesome we have so many in my like state well not state my province I'm so used to saying state because there's so many American teachers on YouTube but in my province of Canada, Ontario, there's a bunch of teacher groups on Facebook. 
And so I joined one that was a 2-3 split group. So it's literally filled with teachers who have taught a 2-3 split before. And I just put my post about how, oh, like, hi guys, um, introducing myself. And I just said how I'm gonna be teaching grade one in the morning and a two, three in the afternoon. Any resources, tips, advice, anything like that would be greatly appreciated. And I got comments back, like literally from people, the kindest messages. It made me feel so good. But one, one made me laugh because someone commented back and said, uh, poor, you poor thing, this should not be humanly possible. <laughs> Oh gosh, my VP came in again. So cringe, oh my gosh. I don't know if she saw me doing anything, but, cause I can see the door from here. So I kinda, and the camera's kinda hidden. So she probably just thought I was talking to someone. I don't know. Ah, oh, it's so hard to vlog at school while I'm in a normal school day. And I don't know how other teacher tubers do it because whenever I'm looking, like at my schedule, the schools are not open very late. Like I see teachers in the States who are staying in their classrooms till six, seven, 8 p.m. And I don't know how they can do that. Like we need to leave the, the classroom. We need to leave the school at a certain time because custodians need to lock up. So I think the max I can stay is like an hour after school. They don't really let you stay pretty late. So I could come earlier in the morning, but everyone's just, everyone comes early in the morning kind of at my school. So everyone's moving around the hallways and whatnot. So cringe, it's gonna be hard to vlog, but I try my best and honestly, probably one day I will get caught doing this and I'll have to explain what I'm doing. But for now, I'm just you know keeping it on the down low. Anyways, I'm gonna get started on my day, um, get organized, I write down my plans still. Do you guys do digital planning or just like written plans? I want to go into digital planning, but I don't know, with all the changes this year, I, it sounded like a monumental task that I didn't really wanna figure out. So I'm sticking with just like my teacher binder. Maybe I can explain how I use this in a different video, but I'm just writing out my plans. It's just easier for me, especially when I'm gonna be moving between classes. I just like grab my binder and go instead of having to like open up my laptop, search for my plans, I don't know. In hindsight, they're probably both fine, but I'm just sticking with written plans for now. So I'm gonna go do that and I will check in with you hopefully at some point today if it doesn't get too crazy. So see you in a bit. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. Oh, sorry guys that I haven't been able to check in at all, all day. It's been a lot. Um, the admin kind of threw the grade ones that I'm supposed to have like starting Monday, they threw them at me like for the last two periods today. So I kind of had like grade twos and ones together. It's so confusing. Anyways, I don't even wanna bore you guys with those details, but all you need to know is that this has been a crazy week. My hair can attest to that. Um, yeah, it's just been a crazy week. And it's probably only going to get crazier, to be honest. Apparently, in my district or in my board, there's already been 30 confirmed COVID cases at the schools around our neighborhood, which goes to show that I don't know how long this is going to last. Like, are we really going to stay open for much longer? I don't know. So I think at this point, like I've just come to terms with the fact that safety is first and you know, like my kids' well-being and their happiness and their safety is what I'm gonna focus on this year. I'm not going to stress about learning three grades of curriculum and all these things. Of course, I will be like planning and doing things, but I'm not going to be stressing about it. Oh, that is the bell that I should be going now. But yeah, anyways, I'm not gonna stress too much. I'm just gonna worry about making them happy and that's what I'm gonna focus on. So thank you so much for watching. I'm going to try and be more consistent on YouTube and make a lot more videos. I probably won't always be doing these week in a life because they're really hard to film when you have so much going on, but I would love to film a lot more, um, just like videos about like my tips or classroom management or different things like that. So any requests or anything like that, you can definitely let me know below. Please subscribe if you've enjoyed this vlog and if you wanna see more of my journey in teaching this year. And I thank you so much for watching. So I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.